Valley News Live and Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. For the sixth straight year, the Bison earned a piece of the Missouri Valley Football Conference title and are now 81 and 6 since 2010. The Bison are primed to make that December playoff run. We will get to the bracket in a minute. We welcome to the set head coach Chris Kleiman. And coach, I want to first congratulate you on this amazing feat. 81 and 6, six straight years, at least a share of the Valley title. That's a great accomplishment. Boy, it is. And, and uh, what a great job by our seniors and captains uh, that led so well this year. We didn't have a lot of seniors, but we had the right seniors. And we had a lot of, we had a few underclassmen captains, and they did a phenomenal job. And, and our guys just, you know, they stayed the course. They never panicked and uh, always felt they had an opportunity to win. And we played a lot of four quarter games, which uh, I think will help us when we get into December. That's for sure. Well, the bracket is out. It was just revealed. Let's look at those top eight seeds. And NDSU did secure the number one overall seed home field throughout the playoffs, as did Eastern Washington. This kind of went true to form Jacksonville State, James Madison, Sam Houston. UND gets the seven. South Dakota State gets the eighth. What do you think of that top eight there, Coach? Obviously great to see the Bison at number one. Yeah, I, we were really ecstatic that uh, we're the top seed and, and we were recognized by the committee as having the, the best schedule and having the best body of work. But I think you and I talked, it's the eight teams that we thought maybe yeah. could have flipped one one way or another, but it's the eight, eight teams that we thought. And, and, and the eight teams, and I, I think they really deserved it. Absolutely. I, I think that went uh, pretty true to form. Now, the Valley did get four. That's good. Last year, the Valley got five. Yeah. We look at the four that got in. Obviously, NDSU's the one. SDSU's the eight. Two on Thanksgiving weekend. Youngstown State, who had 774 yards of offense, scored 65 points yesterday. Maybe they're starting to get a little traction. Their defense is great. And Illinois State, you know what? Good for them. You and I lost, so they, they lost out. Western Illinois lost to Southern Illinois. They lost out. Illinois State, who at one point lost four straight games, rallied back to six and five. They did beat South Dakota State, and they have an FBS win over Northwestern, so good for Coach Spack. Yeah, they deserve to be in after some of the things that happened yesterday, and then they're playing really well, and the big win over Northwestern, and, and they're a playoff-ready football team, and, and they could potentially make some noise. Tell you what, Youngstown State, too, if they get any mojo yeah. offensively, that defense is outstanding, isn't it? Yeah, we looked at that first-round <laughs> matchup they have. If they can get through the first one, they go to Jacksonville State, and I'd put my money on the Penguins. Yeah, absolutely. I would, too. Bo Pelini's done a nice job there. And now let's look at how this sets up for the Bison. We have a, a shot of where the Bison will play, and it's Cal Poly or San Diego, the winner of that game. And I'll tell you what, Cal Poly with Joe Prothro, a fantastic fullback-type running back, that triple option. Cal Poly's a good team. They won at Brookings this year. Yeah, they're an ex extremely good team. We were able to watch that, and they ran it down South Dakota State all, all day long. And, uh, you know, and, and it's a tough matchup because of the option. So. Um, will have to prepare a little bit probably more on them than they would on we would on San Diego yep. simply because it just takes you more days to to learn an option offense. Yeah, San Diego has a good defense, but those two teams played in the regular season. Cal Poly handled them fairly easily. Um, and then you saw South Dakota State yeah. was uh, the eight there as well. So we kind of thought they wouldn't do that again. They yeah. did it again. Well, they're always going to put uh, the Jackrabbits and the, and the Bison sure together. Like we, we don't understand why, but yeah. that's, that's not, a, it's out of our control. It's out of SDSU's control. And uh, both of us will have really good opponents in that first round. And uh, uh, you, you have to play extremely good football each week to try to advance to the next. I'll tell you what, no easy task for South Dakota State if Villanova does in fact beat St. Francis, which they'll be heavily favored to do. Villanova would go to Brookings. Cal Poly already beat San Diego. You would assume that again, but uh, this this is kind of a tough little pot here, isn't it's it? It's a really good pot. Uh, Andy Talley in his last year at Villanova, they've won a national championship under him before. Uh, I think they're a really good football team. Obviously, we talked about Cal Poly and the uniqueness of their offense, mm -hmm. and so uh, I think there's no doubt that little quadrant's got this uh, really tough, tough bracket there. Yeah, let's roll the first half. Let's break down this South Dakota game, uh, move on from the bracket right now, and really figure out how the Bison got there. And You know, I thought early on in the game this weekend, Coach, the D really got it going. Yeah, they really did. We really played well early on, 
uh, getting some stops and our offense was really clicking in the first half. Yeah, Easton Sick was sharp all day uh, real, and really a good day from the tight ends as well. Yeah, we did a great job of, of moving the line of scrimmage. There's Demetri Williams with a really nice catch and we were able to run some bootlegs and have some nice throw and, and, and there's good counter Wentz with a nice play and I thought Easton was exceptional all day. Yeah, all the tight ends got involved. Jeff Ilias had another great day. This is a middle screen on a third and ten. Yeah, great job there. Great call by Coach P. Great job by Ilias. We contacted six and end up getting 11. Well, Lance Dunn was getting uh, the corner on this day. He just showed great speed. Yeah, great block by Chase Morlock and we get the edge and uh, get it inside the five. Yeah, finish with a touchdown here. So right away, boom, right down the field, 7-0. They had been struggling stopping the run coming in. Yeah, they, they really had. And we knew we had to move the line of scrimmage and own the line of scrimmage. And great drive by the offense to start the game. Yeah, 11 plays, 70 yards on that drive. Here's a third and one. And I'll tell you what, they're, they're quarterbacks. They rotated them in there. Both of them were running tough. Yeah, they took some shots. We, we really hit them well. But I'm really impressed with their QB. Third and eight, so uh, the Bison were not getting off on this drive on defense. This was an 11-yard pass on third and eight. Yeah, good job by them. They, they have yep. a really good offense, and they run the tempo, which is sometimes difficult to get lined up. Hit a deep ball, too, here. Yeah, we just they get behind our corner there and, and uh, make a big play on us. Yep, 7-7 seven, seven right now. So pretty even first quarter, really. We move into the second quarter. Easton Stick, that quarterback run was there. Yeah, it really was. And, and when we're running the quarterback as well as doing the things we are in between the tackles with our backs, I think we're really tough to beat. Lance Dunn, 19 yards. That's blocked very well up front. Yeah, and, and Lance is running with a lot of confidence and running really well. All of our backs are. This is a third and seven, and Easton Stick makes a great play for a first yeah, down. Yeah, great job by Shep. Good job by Chase picking up the blitz and, and a good design of the play, and we get a first down. This shows you how on Easton was, too. This play right here, great touch, great decision, just a really good floater for Easton for a touchdown. Yeah, once again, the bootleg, Easton on the move, throws a great pass, just lofts over the top, and Shep uh, does a great job after the catch getting the end zone. Yeah, really only one option there was to loft it, and it was just great touch by Easton, so it's 14-7 buys and this is a third and 12 play they start to move it a little bit here yeah they do we had a tough time uh, covering inside the slot uh, in that first half and they were able to hit us between the hashes that was a 23 yard pass this a 33 yard pass just a good catch yeah just a 50 50 ball and their guy goes up and makes a big play and, and uh, they get a great field position I'll tell you what their quarterback Chris Strebler I have to tip my cap to him the kids a tough kid watch this hit boy he really is he, you know he doesn't get knocked back after contact very often it's a big play for them. They finish it, so it's tied 14-14 here, and the Coyotes came to play, didn't they? Yeah, they really did. They have 18 seniors, and I knew they were going to be ready to play, and, and uh, it was a good football game. Hey, RJ, on this play, this shows what his abilities are. Great yards after the catch. Yeah, really good job sitting down in between the safety and the corner, and then excellent, like you said, right after the catch with the run. Third and two now. Easton's going to break free. Good read by him here to just tuck it. Yeah, really good job cutting it back. Great job by the Rams again up front, getting a great push, and, and we get a big game. Yeah, Jeff Elias, we talked about him a little earlier. We're going to talk about him later in the show. This is just brute strength and will to get in. Yeah, good throw. Great job by Jeff. This is right before half, which gives us a 21-14 lead, plus we get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, and right at the last minute of the first half, man, this is a tough play right here, and Pierre G. Tucker gets hurt on this play. Yeah, he has his knee rolled up on, and, and we'll find out uh, maybe middle of the week uh, the severity of it. Pierre G. Tucker's been a great player, one of the best tacklers on the team. Well, trying to get in position, South Dakota is, but the Bison defense does a good job here late in the half. Yeah, really do, uh, taking the clock down, keeping them inbounds. Uh, create, they have one play left, and, and Greg and Brad both just lay their ears back and meet at the quarterback. Yeah, good half uh, by the Bison as we go to the score. It's 21-14. The Bison get to the locker room, regroup a little bit. The rushing yards, that it's starting to crank up, and the Bison had a big second half running the football, as you'll see. Total yards, 253 to 193. Before we dive into the second half, though, on the Gate City Bank hot seat, Eric Perkins. Eric, as a child, who was your favorite cartoon character? Uh, probably say Johnny Bravo. I like Johnny Bravo. Okay, that makes sense. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Morning. Okay. What is your favorite pro team? Carolina Panthers. That's like Erzendowski. Yep. Yeah. Fan yeah, we base, get sir. along pretty well. <laughs> Visit any place in the world, what would it be? Uh, probably say Greece. That'd be fun. What is the worst household chore? Laundry. Definitely. Yeah. What is a weird habit you can't shake? Uh, I chew my fingernails a lot. Yeah. 
What impresses you most about the Bison coaching staff? That they're all really good friends and they all get along with each other very well. One thing people don't know about you. Uh, I have a pet snake. What's his name? Hydra. Okay, wow. He's an albino ball python. <laughs> all right, thanks, Perk. Yep. Well, Coach, you guys were in a dogfight uh, in this game, 21-14 at half. Well, we knew we would be. I, I, South Dakota's a good football team. We needed to settle down on defense. We weren't getting lined up, and they were hurting us on some tempo things. And then offensively, we just needed to continue to move the football uh, with some runs and then set up the play-action pass. Well, you got the ball to start the second half because you won the toss, deferred, so that's always key to get that ball take it down and you put together a really really nice drive started off with a 28 yard run yeah great job by Lance making the, the defender miss and then cutting back getting a big game this is the quarter where really the run game was clicking you had 11 minutes of possession here here's a 15 yard run yeah it's really good we're really just pushing the point of attack and great job by the guys up front and uh, we're opening up big holes and once again, we run the bootleg again, and uh, great throw and catch. Uh, stick to wins. Oh, that was a really nice laser from Easton, 28-14. And if you don't get to the quarterback, get those paws up. Good job by Ambrosius. Yeah, really good job by Brad. It's, it's good. Uh, Phil always talks about that on the radio. Get the paws up if you're not getting to the quarterback, and that's what happened. Here's a jet sweep to Eric Perkins. Yeah, and the jet sweep was working as well with Easton running the ball off the jet sweep, and the jet sweep set up pretty well. Now, here's a takeaway, though, and this, this kind of slowed the momentum a little bit. Yeah, uh, their kid makes a really nice play. It's yep. a 50-50 ball, and their guy goes up and gets it, and I think that corner's their best player on defense. And half the time, RJ comes up with those 50-50 balls, so Jalen Allison, yeah. I thought great coverage yeah, here. Great Turnover coverage. doesn't hurt you. Yeah, great coverage to, to defend the deep ball. Explosive run play right here, 44 yards. These are really good. Boy, these are, and great job blocking. Dimitri Williams is one of our best blockers downfield. Dimitri's uh, really playing at a high level. USD did bow their neck, though, and we, we show this play because it's a great decision by Easton. Just throw it away, live to fight another day here. Yep, exactly. Get rid of the ball. Don't take a sack. Keep playing the field position battle. Yep, third and two here. They get a first, so they're starting to get a little momentum. Another tough run. He took some shots. Yeah, great strip by Jalen Allison. We don't get on it, but uh, we're playing hard, and that quarterback's nicked up a little bit there. Yep, I thought the best game as a Bison for Stanley Jones. Yeah, I thought Stanley played really well. Uh, did a great job getting penetration and moving forward in the playoffs. We have to get that great play out of Stan. Bison get the ball back. It's third and six, and uh, Easton hits RJ for a first down. Yeah, here. great job knowing where the chains were at with RJ and reaching out and getting the big first down. Moving to the fourth, King Frazier with the 12-yard run. Well, good job. That's, where, that's how you run with King. That's great. And after contact, there's another seven or eight yards. Big run. Now here, there's going to be an intentional grounding, so USD gets a stop, and the momentum's starting to flip a little bit here uh, right at this moment. Yeah, that, good defense by those guys to be able to get the pressure on Easton. Hey, Cole Green got a three and out right here, though. Yeah, once again, we're hitting the quarterback. He took a lot of shots. Chase Morlock, uh, as you get the ball back here, this is a great, great run, but at the end, they punch it out. Yeah, great effort. Uh, they had a penalty. Uh, or we had a penalty down the yeah. line, but... Uh, yeah, the, the turnovers in the second half, without question, hurt us. Uh, just kind of slowed momentum. Yeah, it really did, because sure enough, right away, back the other way, they're in the end zone. It's 28-21 all of a sudden. Yeah, play action. They get uh, in between the safety and the corner, and now we're in a one-score game like we usually are in the fourth. Yep, and the Bison offense did have a three and out right after that, so here comes USD again, only down seven. There goes Strevler. Yeah, they catch us in the blitz. Good tackle by Trey, preventing the touchdown. But the defense bowed their neck right here. MJ Stump, a big tackle for loss. Yeah, this was a first and five that turned into a second and ten. Great, great penetration and good tackle by MJ. And Greg Menard really comes off that edge, forces an incompletion here. Yeah, gets us into a fourth down situation. And they had to make the decision to go for it, and, and they sure do. Yeah, they have a great kicker. You thought they might take the three here, but they decide to go for it. There was about five minutes left here. They don't get this fourth down. That was a big play. Yeah, that was great coverage in the back end. It was really a covered sack, and we flipped the ball to our offense, and, and they're never going to see it again. So at this point, you just need to move the chains, don't you? Yeah, that's a big-time catch. That's, that's a great play by RJ. That was a really good catch. And, and again, move the chains. King with an yep. eight-yard run here, and you're just trying to get that first down to close it out Yeah, here. King does a great job making that first guy miss at the line of scrimmage. Here it is. This is a third and two, I believe, and, and yep. right there gets the sticks and you get the call. Yeah, great, great second effort. Uh, <laughs> You're out there uh, will, well, willing that yeah. stick. Our defense didn't need to go back out there again yep. uh, against that uh, 
uh, great offense. And, and that was such a critical thing for our offense to take it the last five minutes and finish the game off. And that's something that we've been looking for. Uh, and we were able to do that. I know it'll give us a lot of confidence offensively. Hey, I'll tell you what, rushing yards 369 to 161. That is a great day rushing the football on 52 carries. Total yards 523. Great day for the offense. The defense did the job when they had to. A win. I'll tell you what, it's tough to win in the Dakota Dome. You and I didn't do it this year. Every team struggled in their Illinois State loss there as well. 28-21. Bison get a victory. A big one to get at least a share of the title. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. We know how to fight for each other. And we talk about bison pride and um, doing whatever it takes for the guy next to you. And, and I think this year and, and you know even today is a good um, you know representation of that. You just keep fighting and do what it takes. The next guy, they take the reps at practice and they know the defense and they're ready to go in there. And I think, uh, I think a little bit too, I need to step my game up and communicate better and just be listening more. Well, for us, since we've got here, it's been nothing but championships and wins. So it's something that we expect out of ourselves, we expect out of our teammates, we expect out of our coaches, and it's good to get this win and get this conference championship. First two games of the year, winning overtime all the way to this last one, it's uh, been a dogfight every game, and I think that's going to help us move forward into the playoffs, having that experience in tight games so we don't get tight at the end of the game. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a great feeling uh, for the guys in that locker room, and especially the seniors, uh, kind of send them out that way. and so. Um, it's been a tough year, a lot of adversity, and really proud of the guys in the locker room. Yep, great win for the Bison. This week's NODAC Mutual Insurance Player of the Game is running back Lance Dunn. The Bison rushed 52 times for a season high 369, and Dunn really had himself a day. 14 carries for a career high 145, his fourth career 100 yard game. South Dakota came in near the bottom of the FCS, stopping the run, and Dunn took advantage. We knew uh, we were going to have a lot of opportunities in the run game, and uh, we just took advantage of it, advantage of it and uh, just played 60 minutes hard. It was a uh, last regular season game for the, for the seniors and, and for all of us, so I mean, we, we knew it, uh, we were going to play hard and just have fun out there. Great job by Lance. Great job by the Rams up front to get that running game going and, and the tight ends as well. We have a great story on Jeff Ilias coming from nine-man football. We'll have that for you next. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. Jeff Ilias is yet another example of a small town North Dakota kid living a dream playing for the Bison. NDSU has made a living of taking these kids, tapping into their state pride, and developing them into legit Division I football players. It's a work ethic in this part of the country that rises to the top in all of these stories. Alex Egan has this week's Olaf Anderson construction feature story. From the day Jeff Ilias stepped foot on campus at North Dakota State, the coaches could see they had something special. He's developed himself, um, you know, into a, a physical kid, but also a pretty good athlete as well. The success this year didn't happen overnight for the former nine-man football star. It's been a lot of work. His position coach, Tyler Roll, says it's the work ethic that puts Jeff in a position to succeed, and Jeff attributes that work ethic to where he's from. Just small town, North Dakota, that work ethic, and I've always been a quiet guy. My dad's always taught me to stay humble. And... Lidgerwood, North Dakota, about an hour south of Fargo, where Jeff's family has operated a welding shop for the past 75 years. Here, working for what you get is a way of life. Myself growing up and stuff, uh, it was always, everybody had to work, and I think that was instilled in a lot of people, uh, maybe especially in a small town. You know, that probably was something that was more common. Jerry says Jeff grew up playing just about every sport. Basketball, track, baseball, you name it, Jeff played it. Right alongside his two older brothers. So it wasn't a shock when Jeff continued on with football at North Dakota State. It just seemed like he didn't have any trouble, uh, very blessed with uh, what he could do. I mean, there was nothing. It seemed like it was, uh, he always worked hard at stuff, but he never lost interest. This year, the Bison are seeing the payoff of all the hard work Jeff has put in, but he and his coaches know this is only the beginning. He knows he's not a finished product. Uh, he needs to keep pushing himself uh, to get better every single day, and he wants to do things um, better than what they've been done before, so he, we just need to keep pushing him and keep putting him in a position to be successful. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Alex Egan. Well, Coach, he's having a great year, yeah. and it's neat to see the roots he came from and the family upbringing he had that he's a hard worker. 
Yeah, so happy for his success. He is he's really developed over the time he's been here. Uh, he's playing at a really high level for us right now. And he's a guy that can do it at the point of attack as a fullback or a tight end, or we can flex him out like we've done a few times. And he's a better athlete than most all the safeties and linebackers he's going to be on. Yeah, he was a good basketball player too. Well, they also play nine-man football in Minnesota, and Matt Beagler is hoping for some of the same successes as Jeff Ilias. Beagler came in as a tight end out of Underwood, which is just east of Fergus Falls. He has a big frame and is a potential defensive tackle now on defense. Underwood went to the state title game in 13 and 15, which gave Matt a dream opportunity with the Bison. Growing up as a kid, I've always been a, a fan of the Bison because we're about an hour away, and um, my parents were always a fan. My sister's gone to school here, and so I just always really liked the Bison and been a fan. So it, it's been a goal to try and come here and play football. Well, he's a really good player for Underwood. How's his red shirt year going? Really well. We're really impressed with Beegs. He's done a great job. We moved him inside to the defensive tackle spot. He's got to put on some weight, but he's going against Zach Johnson and Plankers and Coonert every day, and, and he's holding his own. He's getting better. Uh, he's got a bright future here. Yeah, he really does. Uh, good luck to him. Well, we got some ticket information for you. I know you're waiting on that. We'll have it for you after the break. Well, Verizon is the better network and sponsor of our look ahead. We don't know the opponent, but we do know the ticket situation. Online sales start today. Ticket window will be open during the week in the new Sanford Health Athletic Complex South Entrance starting Monday. Deadline to claim those season tickets is 5 p.m. Friday against to be determined, and that is Cal Poly or San Diego coach. And we revisit the top eight uh, as we look at the bracket and uh, kind of revisit things as we close here. North Dakota State is obviously the number one. Eastern Washington, the two, both had the best resume. This is kind of how we thought it would turn out. Yeah, it, it really is. And you see all the, the FCS heavyweights in that top uh, top eight, and especially those top four with James Madison having a phenomenal year. Jacksonville State, everybody's familiar with. I think they have a really tough second round matchup, though. Yeah, with Youngstown. And James Madison's quarterback situation, Brian Ryan Shore potentially not available for the playoffs. We'll have to see on that. They had to pull the red shirt of a freshman in week 10 to, to replace him. So we'll see how they do. But uh, some very good teams this year. Enjoy this run. The Bison 81 and 6 since 2010. Unbelievable. And someone has to come through Fargo to keep the Bison out of Frisco. That's going to be really fun. Another fun December ahead of us here in Fargo. Enjoy it, everybody. We'll see you next time.